Confederacy of Dope. Toronto Raptors. Scotty B. We the North, baby. What's up, buddies? Welcome to the Confederacy of Dunks basketball podcast. I'm your host, Freddie Revis, here on Raptors Republic with my fellow co-host and producer, <laughs> Andy Hull. Hello. Uh, fellow, you know? He's a fellow. Yeah, fellow. With my fellow. Um, with my fellow. Uh, and you know what? I'll keep, I'll, keep, I'll keep the fellow train going. Another fellow of mine, fellow Raptors <laughs> Republic uh, guy. Uh, Aiden Moss, what's up? How you doing? Uh, welcome back. I'm good, fellas. Happy to be here. Uh, always, always a good time chatting with you. Yeah, let's uh, let's jump right into it because we are recording this uh, just as Game Five begins. I did call this series in five. Hope I'm wrong. Feel like I won't be, um, but. Uh, Yeah, so we don't know. You know, this podcast is going to come out um, on the morning of the 18th. So we're not sure what's going to happen with the series quite yet. So uh, I thought of some uh, semi-evergreen topics. So can I just can I just before we get into those, can I say congratulations to the Boston Celtics? Sure, 2024 NBA champions. I'm calling it now. A and, bold, hot take. And I'll just say congratulations to PJ Washington. Broke Michael Jordan's record 64 points in a game. Yeah, huge Holy shit. performance. Huge Massive. Performance. Go off, PJ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to congratulate any future anything, Aiden? Nothing comes to mind yet. I'm going to work <laughs> on it. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so lost in the series, to be honest. Like, I just don't. I was, I was pretty bullish on the Mavericks. I thought they were going to roll right in and then. The, the three of the four games, it just felt like so much lesser. Everything looks so hard um, compared yeah. to Boston. And I just didn't anticipate that at all. So I'm really at a loss. I don't want to make any any predictions anymore. I've lost enough money trying to do that. <laughs> to be fair, and anyone that listens to this podcast you know, would happily call me out. I've made so many wrong predictions <laughs> in general. And also specifically this season in this playoffs, I've just been, I've been missing the mark all over the place. So this that must is what that must be weird. Cause I've never done that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. You called Malachi's 50 point game. <laughs> um, I knew, I knew the day was going to happen and everything. <laughs> yep. <great. laughs> yeah. You, you won a lot of money. Um, yeah. I won a ton of money. Uh, uh Yeah. Uh, Okay, let's, uh, yeah, so this is always, you know, we, we think about the glamour markets and, and the best franchises, and I thought it'd be fun to think about the very worst franchises in the NBA uh, year to year. So this is a, you know, I, I want you guys to think of like a player finds out they're getting drafted there, they're upset. Uh, they get find out they're getting traded there, they're upset. They are there, they're upset. <laughs> um what are yeah let's see if we can you know we'll we'll go one by one see if see if there's any disagreements here let me start uh with you aiden we'll we'll go you know three down to one so the third worst what's the in your in your opinion the third worst franchise in the nba so there's so many there's so many angles to this question you know like criteria could be all over the map so i i've done the three two one countdown um, and maybe each has its own criteria. I don't know. But first of all, I'd like to honorably mention Boston and Utah. Pro- like, you know, kind of anecdotally, maybe probably the most racist fan bases in the NBA. So, like, yeah. you know, good for those guys. I, I wouldn't be stoked to be drafted there. And I think uh, I think it was Kyrie recently made some comments about, like, you know, it's hard to be in Boston. And wink, wink, nod, nod. So, you know, funny you say that. I almost brought that up as a talk. Like that actually inspired this question because really? it made me think about. It made me think sort of about like all of yeah, Boston's you know like race, racist history and like you know this isn't us just like attacking Boston. Like it's well, well documented. Yeah. But um, you know, even more recent stuff with like the the Isaiah Thomas, uh, you know, getting him to play through an injury and then not resigning him. And I mean, I remember Anthony Davis's dad was like. If you guys trade for Anthony Davis, we will make your life hell. And um, yeah, I mean, shout out to Boston. They've really uh, made their current situation work. 
not via trade yeah. or free agency. Like, so uh, they not big know, trades anyway, not big trades. No. Sorry. Yeah. Like, I mean, sh- sh- yeah, I, I guess Derek White's like, listen, and listen, Porzingis to and holiday. <laughs> yeah, so. fair enough. Actually, you know what? See, see, this is what I mean. A bad takes all over the place over here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So no, thanks for just, that was like a quick bang, bang, bang. Not to be I'm the dead. guest that tells you you're wrong or anything, but. No, I've been shot in the heart three times, uh, nine minutes into the pod and I'm dead. Um, okay. okay. So. Yeah. yeah, so third place for me is very simple. It's actually two teams in one. It's the both Los Angeles teams. And, you know, like weather is nice. I get it. Um, you know, star studded fan base, uh, um, you know, like great. Yeah, great cities maybe to be in the traffic just straight up. I'm not willing to be in a city that is gridlock all of the time. And uh, especially when I'm trying to get to games, to practices, um, the beach, whatever. So don't send me there. I'm not interested in in that kind of traffic situation. Okay, but but the one thing <laughs> traffic, the one thing about LA uh, uh, transit is that it's really easy to get to the Staples Center by subway. It's like okay. the only thing the LA subway does is okay, get to the Staples Center. So that is a thing. If you, you could be like Willie Nylander and ride the LA subway as an LA Laker or Clipper. I mean, if I were a celebrity, I would be one with the people. So like you would yes. probably find me on the subway or in the bike lane. Matt Bonner, um, Red Rocket. Yeah. Red Rocket. Yeah. yeah. Love him. Um, so yeah. So, so third is a tie LA and LA. Yeah. Poor traffic situation. Uh, I, I love that. Mine is the, um, uh, that's one of mine. Mine's not the Lakers. Uh, I think people do want to go there, but I liked your traffic angle. Uh, mine is the Clippers. That's my, that's my number three okay. worst. Don't want to go there team. And I feel like even with the changes, they've, you know, like they've basically been a you know, pretty competitive, good franchise in a, in a lot of ways since Blake Griffin, and you know, better post Sterling, but they have just such an abysmal history. And even with this Kawhi PG era, yeah, you know, never made a conference finals. Their uh, winning percentage all time is uh, second worst in the league, forty-two uh, percent win percentage all time. So uh, I'm with you there uh, with the Clippers. A- Andy, who's your number three? Oh man. Okay, my number three uh, is the armpit of America. Okay, and good, good. I don't want to go there. I don't want to be anywhere near this place. They got a cool like museum thing happening, but that's it. That's the end of it. The Drew Carey show was was their like claim to fame. Cleveland, get me out of Cleveland. I don't want to be anywhere near Cleveland. It's like, remember when the Indians or the, now they're the Guardians, but remember when they were in the, like, uh, um, I want to say the World Series, but I think actually it was the ALCS, like, when we were, like, teens, maybe, and I, you're probably around the same age as us, uh, uh, and, like, all those flies were everywhere. Do you guys remember that? Do you remember that? There was, like, the Kinda. baseball players couldn't, like, they couldn't, like, they couldn't, like, breathe because all these crazy flies were coming this off of Lake good. Erie. Yeah. I don't want that. I don't no, want to deal with those flies I don't want lake, every like ten I don't years want or whatever flies, it is. No. I don't want the lake flies. Yeah, no lake flies. So that so 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 between you know, I mean, you're also like they're all messed up because of LeBron. You don't want to be with that's a lot of baggage coming with that franchise. I don't want to go anywhere near them. Cleveland's out. The armpit of America. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame though is okay. We'll go there and we'll have a good time. So you don't think that Donovan Mitchell was happy to get traded there? Uh, I think he <laughs> loves it, and I think he's the armpit of the league. Uh, very, fair, very fair. Um, armpit of the league. Wow, that's a that's a that's a moniker. Okay, well, Andy, let's, let's stick with Start you. With my number two, <laughs> just you a stray number at Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. Yeah. Right my yeah. Can't wait for that the next the next you episode. You brought him into this. Who's the most armpit player of the league? <laughs> I love Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. Um, Spider? No, Venom? That pure, Come on. pure armpit. Um, okay, okay. My number two, honestly, pretty similar city. Uh, we're talking up in the Great Lakes region. We're talking <laughs> basically the armpit on the Great Lakes of armpits 
it's Detroit. Why would you ever want to go to Detroit? Like, what am I, a RoboCop? Get me out of this place. I don't want to be anywhere near Detroit. They are the, they're the worst team in the league. Uh, uh, they're, uh, I don't like their logo. I never have, even though part of me is like, it's very, it's nice and classic. I do like that part of it. I love, well, but, yeah, um, I disagree. You know, like I had a lot, I had a, I actually, this is, this is a, this is a quick switch because I didn't want to just say the same one that Aiden said, but I'm going, I'm, I'm going for it. Detroit sucks. Get me out of Detroit. Uh, the, I'll, unless they bring back the palace of Auburn Hills, in which case I'll play in a place that's called that. Cause that's like the best name that's ever uh, existed for mm -hmm. a sports arena outside of maybe Joe Lewis arena, which is also in Detroit. So they've had a whole history of tearing down good sports places, you know? So forget it. They could have reenactments of the malice in the palace, you know, like you could go yes. sit in and you could be like a part of the audience, the fan. <laughs> like yeah, Civil like, War reenactment. Yeah, exactly. Lars LARPing? Guys, Lar guys LARPing dressed as... <laughs> yeah. Guys, yeah, face. guys dressed as Ron Artest. <laughs> yeah. I, okay, I, I want to be the guy that like either did or didn't throw the drink is unclear, but like who's about to get punched and is pointing to someone else. Yeah. <laughs> that guy's good. Um, I listen. Don't get me wrong. I want to be there for Detroit theater, and this sounds like it's a, a more of a theater thing. So I'm there for that. The shout outs to the Detroit Improv Festival, but I don't want to be anywhere near Detroit sports. Hey, they, the Tigers, listen, boo! But the boo. Pistons are different. Well, also, Lake Michigan, pu, get out of here, get out of here, okay, Lake Michigan, hates lakes. droopy, droopy ass lake, get out also, of here. We we are in Toronto. We have Lake Ontario. There's one great lake, baby. Lake Ontario. This one great lake. We're not even the biggest. We don't. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Superior. Yeah. More like in superior. Sure. No worries. Um, <laughs> we we have flies too. Come on. Um, get out of here. I've had enough of your fly apologists. <laughs> Detroit this... story Detroit? franchise. Boo down. Wow, it's ridiculous. Uh, bad we're, boys. We're at odds here. Bad boys. Get them. Um, um... <laughs> okay, I'm gonna jump in with with my number two. Uh, I, I was sort of like, you know, sticking around for me, like you gotta be a lowly win percentage. You gotta like lose most of your games. So I am going with the, it's just sort of tight. I almost, yeah, it was, it's between two teams, but I think one team has a little bit of a cooler history. So I am going with the Washington wizards. Uh, I think wow. that, Yes, they do have a championship very, very long time ago. But uh, in my entire basketball life, they've never been good. They have generally, you know, uh, what's their best era in, in, in our, like, you know, is, is it the Gilbert oh, no. Arenas era? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it can't be. <laughs> Man, that, that, guy, <laughs> that guy retroactively has ruined his era. Yeah. His, yeah, his and, podcast and was, presence has ruined his 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 era as a basketball player. Yeah, and it was it, the era was already, I mean, pretty famously ruined. Yeah, it was uh, already pretty rough. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm going the Washington Wizards. Like you know, it's just it's all bad. Like there's just a lot of sadness there. A lot of you know, they're yeah, they're, like, they're all, always a good example of like when people who are very pro tank, it's like. Dang. Oh, peace, Freddie. Anyways, he'll be back in a sec. Uh, I'll say this about the Washington Wizards. Like, the, the what did it for, like, they were they felt like they were going to come back. Okay, we're not the Bullets anymore. Now we're the Wizards. We've, like, rebranded. We got new colors. We got a new logo. We got everything like that. And we and guess what, guys? We got the number one pick? Kwame Brown. And we got Michael Jordan. And we're still the worst. <laughs> you know? So, like, it just never happened for them. Uh, which is unfortunate because, you know, it's funny because like the Capitals in hockey, they did a similar thing where they changed their branding and yeah, there's Freddie's back and they, but they had Alexander Ovechkin and it ended up working out for them. But the Wizards just haven't been able to put it together. I do you think, do you think the Bullets would be a workable name in today's day and no. age? I don't know. I think they would have had to the have very, Yeah. At the very least it wouldn't have survived the pandemic. No, <laughs> no way. Yeah. Yeah, even though it's a better, like, it's a better name, just like word wise. You know what I mean? Like, like, lose, yeah. forget the meanings of both words. I don't like the alliteration of Washington Wizards. I don't care for that. Bullets is, I think, a cooler word, but obviously, not yeah. really. You can't really it's also, that. it's hard to have a wizard when you already have magic. 
You know, it's yeah, like that's it. Yeah. you can't really have you, like I'm, you know, I'm a fantasy fan, but you can't have like two kind of fantastical things going on in one. It's, it's also so far from basketball. I've always hated yeah. like, the Wizards. It's like not even it's dumb. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, okay. It's all number bad. ones. Number no, ones? no, they're, they're still. I got my uh, number two. Aiden's number good try two. though. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, your number three was too good. <laughs> try. Like, so. Yeah, good try, fly guy. Yeah, try. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mine's out of the Great Lakes. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, this theme for number two is um, the workplace and like you know workplace <laughs> yeah. safety. And mm-hmm. the most hazardous workplace in the NBA right now is in the city of Philadelphia. Because you have a seven foot something, two hundred and eighty pound mm, good mass angle. of muscle and strength landing on the ground at least twenty to thirty times a game, and any ligaments within the vicinity are extremely vulnerable to rupturing or being torn. Yeah, R.I.P. Um, Danny Green. Yeah, seriously, career Dunzo. And then you know if you if you leave the arena and you happen to hitch a ride with Kelly Oubre. You might just end up in a car accident or a bike accident or something. So it's actually just a very unsafe uh, team to be a part of. And I, I would not want to be on the floor with Embiid. And if I were, I'd be three feet behind the three-point line, far and away from his body. Yeah, plus, you know, collar gate with uh, Colangelo. Yeah. You know, you don't want to get caught up in that? No. <laughs> you don't want to get caught in that collar. <laughs> you want to escape collar. it. Yeah. Tall collar. It's a tall collar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Philly, I like it. You know, this is uh, you know, I, I like your angles. Yeah, I like this. This is good. We're just basically ripping on franchises here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, Aiden, what's your number one? Okay, this one is. I did the whole like kind of analysis on this one. Number one for me right now, currently in the NBA, is in Phoenix. Um, oh yeah, I was thinking about it's, that. When it what came to mind was a toxic snake pit of insatiably oversized egos. Um. Between the owner who like is somehow more arrogant than his players and genuinely thinks he has a good team and a good roster, um, between Durant and Booker and Beal, who all think supremely highly of themselves, Durant rightfully so, but the other two not so much, um, and with nothing really to show for it. And then, you know, like James Jones, Jones, their GM, has done pretty good drafting, but he also was the vice president when they hired Doncic's coach, drafted Aiden, and then fired Doncic's coach, um, which is is like an epically historic failure um, when it comes to drafting. Uh, yeah, and then Phoenix is probably going to like run out of water in the next 25 years. So I just don't – I don't want to be on that team or in that city or anywhere around that management or ownership situation. Well, I like that's it. A good, that's so, a good pick. Shout out to Climate Change. Um, <laughs> yeah, always. It's, a, it's a hot place. Uh, Andy, who's your number one? My number one is uh, the biggest mess in the NBA, I think. And they kind of have always had this like little brother feel to them. Like they've never been a real franchise. Like no one's ever really thought of them as a heart, as a real contender. Uh, and that's the Charlotte Hornets. Yeah. Um, I mean, what can we say positive about also the my number Charlotte one. Hornets? Not much. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, big uh, college uh, ball city. So we're like, hey, an NBA franchise will work there. It's hardly working. They've already lost a team once um, for whatever, you know, whatever you want to say about that. But I just feel like Charlotte is such a, a moment in the 90s. And it's the teal jerseys that they that they that they still have that obviously is a big part of their identity. I get it, but it's just so the '90s, and they're they've never been better than that team in the '90s. It feels like 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 Larry Johnson, Bugsy Bogues, like they've never been better than that team. And uh, um, I just I like does anyone want to go to Charlotte? Does anyone want to want to go? Like does does anyone want to go to 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 uh, I was gonna say Virginia, uh, um, uh, <laughs> North Carolina, <laughs> Carolina, right? Like like North Carolina, like I I can catch a like like what's worse, going to a Charlotte Hornets game or going to a Carolina Hurricanes game? Don't I mean, make the, me go to hur- any of them. The Hurricanes Don't make have me won go. though. The Hurricanes have won. They've won a championship, and like you yeah. know, but I still would rather 
you know, I'd rather drown in Lake Erie's flies <laughs> than than go watch a game in North Carolina. Wow. I'm Sorry, hates North flies. Carolina. This guy hates <laughs> flies. I've actually um, never been to North Carolina. I will say this: my wife has been there once, and she said it was really nice. And uh, but I will never set foot there. My 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 I'm wife a South from... Carolina man all the way. <laughs> great, great. I was gonna say my wife's from South Carolina, so listen. To North yeah. Carolina. Oh yeah, South only. <laughs> Eat it. Um, championships zero. Conference zero. titles zero. Division yeah. titles zero. Terrible Retired team. numbers one. Nobody knows them. Uh, I was just gonna it? ask who is it. A little bit, a little bit of trivia here. Uh, Bobby Glenn Ray Rice. Phils Jr. Do you guys, do you guys know Bobby okay. Ray Phils Jr.? <laughs> That's got to be like what, 1972? Uh, 69. Or, <laughs> yeah. or, Wait, what franchise were they before they were the Hornets? Is that uh, like ABA? Yeah, something, yeah, something like that. He, um, well, he, like Charlotte's ABA team. He he played for the Hornets. Uh, from 1997 to 2000, so he played for the Hornets for, no, for okay. three years. The 60s, yeah, because they're, they're they're expansion team. Yeah, <laughs> they're the forever expansion team. That's the thing. They cannot, in my mind, they and maybe that's just because this is from when I started liking basketball was in like the early 90s. Hold on, hold maybe on. They'll just forever gotta, I, be an expansion team to me. I have to call myself out. This is a <laughs> okay. absolute absolute uh, travesty this, and a mistake on this my is part. A call out podcast. I'm calling myself up. He passed away in automobile accident. So shame on you. You know what? I was going to say, is but this a thing where like I, the, like the league, I, I the remember this only, story. Yeah. The and then I started reading it along numbers like, when guys this died. Is a, so. This isn't a tragedy. So apologies to everyone for me, from me. So they retired his number because he passed away. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I guess, I guess so. Like he passed away as a Hornet. So listen, yeah. The sad thing about Charlotte is like the only good things about it is its local announcer, which I'm not sure if you're familiar. Uh, I can't remember his name right now, but he is absolutely incredible. He's like very celebrated him. as a. Yes, that guy's YouTube. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's so YouTube emphatic YouTube. and loud and excitable. And then also, their honeycomb courts are sick. I have to say. Like that's oh, a really see, good... I think they're sick in a way that makes me sick to look at them. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> Like drinking I'm the water at a lake here, kind of stuff. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yes, absolutely. I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle, but I'm still feeling <laughs> rattled that I talk disrespectfully. That you made about fun a, of a dead guy, of a deceased man. Um, <laughs> he talked mad shit. Yeah, deep, deepest apologies. Uh, but I still, I, I mean, I won't take back that Charlotte is the very worst franchise. No, they're the armpit no. of the league. Yeah. They are okay. <laughs> the armpit. All right. Three armpits uh, so far. Yeah, okay. there's three armpits. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Uh, let's keep it. Um, let's keep it weird. Is that what they say in Portland? Okay. Um, I want you guys to. Uh, I'm just thinking about this because I've been watching the Euro Cup, and 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 I'm one of those people. You know, I love soccer. I played soccer growing up. Soccer, basketball were, were that was like my, my my shit. Uh, but even still, I just I can't stop every time I watch because I don't watch a lot of like Premiership or a little bit of Champions League. Every time I watch international soccer, I, I start to be one of those sort of annoying fans where I'm like, what if they change this rule? Um, anyway, so I like yeah. to do that for the NBA a little bit, but I really wanted to just go for it here. So what's a rule from another sport that you would bring in to the NBA? Okay. So what's, um, a, what's a rule from like hockey or badminton yeah. or whatever the hell? I just want to, for, for very quickly, I just want to jump on. I'm also that guy when I watch any kind of uh, 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 European football, like soccer, like any tournament, anything. I'm always just like, this, this doesn't make any sense the way they do this. Meanwhile, it's mm -hmm. the most popular sport in the world. I'm always like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. know how to it, make it better. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I've got a bunch totally of ideas fun. for that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's doing good. People seem to like it. Okay, um, yeah. Aiden, you, uh, got, you got anything? Or, or, or Andy? Yeah. Okay. I'll just say this. I'll, I'll say this. Penalties. Hockey penalties. You're off hockey the court. Penalties. For you're two off minutes. the court for a not not for two minutes. <laughs> See, that might be a little hard to work. But like some, there's some amount of time where you have to like go stand off, you know, uh, off the court there for like some amount. Like maybe it's just a, a, I don't know if it's like a possession or if it's like a, a, a shot clock. You know what I mean? It's 24 seconds or maybe maybe it's a full minute. 
And how do you do it? Listen, what happens when multiple people start fouling? We don't know the ins and outs of it just yet. Leave me alone about that. But all I'm saying sure. is that maybe because 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 one thing that's always bugged me about basketball is that there's a point in the game where doing the illegal thing is not bad, <laughs> you know, like it can actively help you win the game. And that well, I know it's like it's baked in now. It's just the way it is. It's never going to change. Uh, um, but it's it always kind of irked me that I'm like, ooh, we figured they figured let that out, and there's no way to fix that. So like. That 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 would be one of the things I try to address with this okay. magic thing All right. we're doing. Uh, Aiden, yeah, I'm with Andy. Like, um, I th- I think the take foul rule was so like needed and took so long to implement. But that mm-hmm. ag- again, like having illegal, being able to leverage illegal activities doesn't make much sense. Um, and harsher and punishment. That, yeah, and on that note, like I think I know the diving is a rule, but I like, you know, in soccer, if you dive, you get a yellow card. I'm pretty sure right away. So mm-hmm. uh, in hockey, if you dive, you get two minutes. So I think like if you dive twice, you should just get tossed in the NBA. No technical fouls, like no shooting. I think I'm on I'm on this tr- like top of a mountain, trumpeting my trumpet about the NBA has a real like speed problem and product value problem. And I might've even been on this podcast before to talk about it, but it's so goddamn slow. And like, right when the, you know, you're, it's like when you're watching a movie, the rising action, the tensions building, like the game's getting close. Everything's like so exciting. and I'm sweating. And then there's four reviews and five timeouts and six commercials. And like, I'd rather just go to bed and then see what happens at the end of the game. Like it's very problematic. So I think, we should get rid of challenges yep. or if you have a challenge and you miss like in hockey, you get like two, two points are awarded to the other team or something that's that penalizes you. Cause teams will just challenge for the hell of challenging cause they have one left. Um, so I think those two things, challenges and diving need to need to be hev- more heavily enforced so that we can just speed this game up more. Cause I find it like too slow. The second challenge I was so heavily against and like, you know, I, I, it, it, it's weird. Cause it's so different for every sport. You know, I remember when like the, the soccer fans were, were sort of like, Oh, you know, we can't have video replay because like, it's just bad. It's like, yeah, but like if it's a one goal game and someone like throws it in with their hand, you simply do need to not let that happen. And so I get the, mm-hmm we got to make the right call stuff, but I I agree with you. It just, things are get so, so slow and it it bogs down. Actually the WNBA this year um, instituted a new, uh, a new timeout rule where it's sort of like an on the fly timeout. You don't get to go to the bench, but you can advance the ball. Mm. And, and it's like a team's like basically have like set plays. So it's like, Hey, if, if it's a late game situation, we're going to just call a timeout. You don't get to go to the bench and talk. It, there's no TV. It just basically moves the action up. And it's like, it's, it's, it's working. So it's working pretty well. And, and it's cool to see teams have to respond to like a set play um, on the fly. Yeah. It's like no huddle for, uh, in football. It, it's exactly like, like no huddle. Yeah. The, the NBA is slowly becoming the least innovative league. And, and like they are making tweaks, but it's not aggressive enough. And they're, I don't think they're like, you know, even reviewing any touch to the head, for example, like that's just so kind of antiquated. I think we can all kind of very, very clearly determine if something is egregious or not. We don't need to look at every time someone's head is involved in a play, you know, for example. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. I went absolutely yeah, that- silly. Sorry. Go ahead, Andy. No, it's okay. Go ahead. Keep going. Uh, I went absolutely silly with mine, which is... Um, oh, okay. Okay. You weren't going to talk about the, the thing. I, I wasn't. Yeah. One, so one, if you had a comment... One, yeah, one, yeah, yeah. I got to say one thing is that uh, that is the number one complaint I hear about people who are like extremely casual fans of the NBA. Like like not even like just casual people who just watch Raptors or whatever or, or just like come in and out and are sort of tangentially aware of the league. Like people who like... who like Like my wife, she enjoys to sit down and watch a basketball game. She, she likes the sport, but she's not, like, keeping up with what's happening in the league, right? She'll watch a game now and then. And 
uh, other people who are like that, that's always their number one complaint is like, oh, well, the end of the game is like 20 minutes long. And, yeah. like, you know, <laughs> it's just fouls. It's just free throws. It's like, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. It's It's been a problem for so long that it's like we, we, we've all we've all just accepted it now. You know what I mean? And oh, it just yeah. I accepted like you're right. it a long like, time ago. Yeah, yeah. And like the, the the innovation part of it, you're right. Uh, in it's like it's just they have, they're not even trying with it anymore. Cause we're you're just, just we've all just accepted it. If you have, it's like a convergence of this new generation that's getting consume. Even my like peers are consuming games through TikTok or through Twitter. Not even watching the games. So if you're gonna try and get them to the game or watch the game on TV, you gotta like shorten it and make it faster and just as competitive and like watching FIBA last summer and even watching hockey in playoffs, like their commercials are way less often. Um, and it's kind of like, you know, it's coming, you know, that the commercial is going to be now. And then, then you're done. Whereas like, I've seen the same fucking sports net commercial, like a thousand times in a game. I want to just vomit, you know, cause Canada only has six commercials. So like I, it's stuff like that that they really just need to fix. Yeah. Agreed. Okay, here's my fix. Absolutely insane okay. fix. It doesn't even need fixing whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> in the NFL, you have the the whole thing where the the, the quarterback and the coach, uh, in, in the helmet of the QB, the the coach can talk to him. So I want that for the point guard in the NBA. Just earbuds though. So uh, it's like a Bluetooth scenario, and I want the coach to be able to just like pitch talk pump. to them. What's that? Amen. Like pitch calm, but you can just talk to them. Okay. You got it. Like, like, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So mine is not fixing any problems. It's probably going to introduce problems. Uh, you know, I'd say that that's not even, that's not even doing what your question is. Your question said, take one rule <laughs> from another. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's not a rule. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> um, you know what? This is, this is this a call is out a... podcast. This is a call <laughs> out podcast. Yeah, he's not calling you out. You just got called out. Get yeah. back to Lake Erie with this bullshit. That's not a rule. Wow. Um, uh, yeah, Your you know what? Your favorite, precious, great lake. Yeah, yeah, it's not a bad lake. I've driven by it. Um, it's a very bad lake. <laughs> it's not the worst. Uh, it sucks. <laughs> Andy, do you wait? Do you have a, a rule change? Uh, I do, but it's stupid. The golden snitch. Let's get a golden snitch happening. Let's get a thing, a little like a drone that flies around, like outside the arena sometimes, and you can send so, a so player yours is from to go get it. Yeah, mine's a Quidditch. Cool, cool. cool. Yeah. Uh, right. And if a player can track it down and get it, then they just win. The game stops, Got actually. It. So this is a thing. Okay, this is actually a, sl a small thing where, like, uh, I, that's the dumbest thing in the world, right? When, yeah, when J.K. Rowling wrote those books and was like, <laughs> oh, Vent a Sport. And everything about it is like, oh, yeah, this all kind of is pretty cool. And then it's like, I need, a, I need a way for Harry Potter to be really good at it. It's like... Ah, this other he thing cheats. that has nothing yeah. to do with it. He, it's stupid. It's the worst thing. Yeah. You can tell she doesn't know anything about sports. Uh, uh, um, but there is part of it that I was like, and she doesn't never gets into it in any of the books because whatever. Uh, but like, if your team's losing in Quidditch or in my new version of the NBA, you don't want to get the golden snitch. So you'd be out there like beating on the other player because you're allowed to do that, right? So like, you'd be out there like like actively trying to make him not find the snitch until your team starts winning and then you're starting to look for it or we call it the golden uh drone maybe we'll call it that yeah drone. drone i'm glad that we just call it a drone yeah we'll just call it the golden drone also i it's... wrote home runs hmm okay. i don't know what that means i just wrote home runs what do you guys think a home run in <laughs> basketball would be <laughs> i feel like um if yeah, you're down, talking. if you're down a certain amount and you hit a like half court kind of space, you're automatically tied, no matter how that. far down you are. I love that. I also thought of like bringing uh, rules from the NBA into other sports would be interesting. Like, there's a couple of sports I could use a three point line. You know, like that would be interesting. I'd love a, I'd love one of those in like hockey. It's like if you score from behind this line, it's two goals. Mm -hmm. Now what are you gonna do? I don't know if that would ruin the sport or yeah. what, but what, what are you, what are you going to do? Get, get, get the golden snitch. You're done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Score from <laughs> behind the two point line and then go find the golden, the golden what you, drone. What, what are you going to do? Drown in a lake of flies. You're done, buddy. <laughs> You're done, buddy. You only <laughs> if you live in Cleveland. 
the like Steph Curry generation of hockey would just be like all these kids who take slap shots from like behind <laughs> yeah, the blue yeah, line. Yeah. Yeah, no exactly. one knows how to go to the net anymore. <laughs> it would be so yeah. boring. And they would have to have like a rule where like the goalie's not allowed to wear equipment anymore. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, the, the goalie would just always save it. That's, um, yeah, it's like, it's that's good. Um. Okay, well, you know, uh, let me try and recover here. It's not it's not a rule necessarily, <laughs> but just a place. Okay. Oh, another already, not a already rule. Not following yeah, the question. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know what? You're over two, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> let me call myself out, dunk on myself, and move on. Uh, <laughs> because I was just gonna say that the players should be able to like the way they lay down in front of a slap shot, you should be able to just like drop. And if they do that in the NBA. You know, but jump I mean, up and put their arms in front of them. I it's mean, hit the floor. Like someone's got to jump over you. Like fully, just like it's a it's a car. Oh, you can like trip a guy. Yeah, but trip with your body. Like you can't like you can't stick your leg out. But you can hit the ground. Like like a new style of charge. Is just just lay in front of somebody. Okay, interesting. Interesting. No, it's not good. Not a uh, not a no, rule. No, it's not. It's not a rule yeah. either. Really, you could ju- you could yeah. do that in the NBA right now if you wanted. <laughs> like it's a bizarre. It's, um, it's a bizarre tactic. You'd get a foul for it, maybe. I guess. Yeah, I think it's illegal. Okay. Would that be um, okay? Would that be taking a charge if you just laid on the ground and a guy ran into you and fell? It would be tripping. It would be tripping for sure. They'd call it tripping. Yeah, well, fair enough. I, okay, I I would. I, You're right. You're right. Yeah. This was bad. Let's as move. as Kyle Lauer, he's definitely thought of it. Yes. Yeah. He's yeah. Sure. He's for sure done stuff like that. Um. Okay. Uh. Let's. Uh. You know. There. The, there is actually some Raptors news. I think the the you know some some rumors out there. Um, and, and, and reporting, uh, but I think the main thing is, you know, they're, they're going to try and extend Scotty Barnes, which is like, not even really a thing, just sort of was going to happen, but, uh, it looks like they are going to, um, pick up Bruce Brown's contract. Uh, however you feel about that, you know, it's whatever, but what do you think, uh, Aiden, what do you think? fans can realistically expect uh in a return for bruce brown let me say this very clearly not a lot yes <laughs> i mean i tried to really go through all of the teams and it's tough right now because cap situations all, all over the place yes options haven't been opted in or out of yet and things like that mm-hmm. but there's such a narrow window for brown Bruce Brown, and I think that's why we got him in the last um, deadline is because there's, you know, it's a contender that wants Brown. He's at $20 million, so you've got to be a contending team that is able to give away $20 million in contracts of players that are not value to you. And then Masai is going to have to want something in return. Like that, those contracts are probably going to need to be expirable, and if they're not... It's gonna. You're gonna need to then give something else in return as far as a young player or a draft pick. But the mm-hmm. draft pick is gonna be pretty crap because it's gonna be a contending team. So really, like, it's not gonna be great, um, in my opinion. I mean, I could be totally wrong. There's always magic pull out of a hat with these trades, and I'm always surprised at what is or is not given up in trades. Mm-hmm. But like, I was kind of quickly just going through teams and and things that kind of came up. Like a lot of teams like Denver, Minnesota, they just have nothing to trade. They they yes. have big contracts and mini contracts, nothing in the middle. Um, I thought of Duncan Robinson and a pick from Miami. Uh, Robinson's got another year, so we get like the pick in compensation for taking on that money. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lonzo Ball and a pick, same yep. same thing. Evan Fournier in a pick in Detroit. You never know with Detroit. They got rid of Weaver now, so their obsession with bigs from the 1990s might be over, and they might actually want to be contending with some guards. Um, And then I thought maybe the Lakers, where you have Vanderbilt and something, something, and like Christie or Hood Shafino in a pick. So basically all I'm saying is that you're going to maybe increase your asset pool a little bit, but – it's not going to be transformative by any means. Yeah, I'm exactly with you. This is sort of where, where my head was. I, I feel like they have to take back more years of yeah. money to get Probably. off of Bruce Brown. And because it has to be, yeah, like there, there's not a lot of those those middle of the way um, 
contracts I had. The only like, like the the guys you were naming was sort of the sort of the ones I was looking at. Uh, I was curious about a guy like Rui Hachimura, who I think he's improved too much, so the Lakers probably just want to keep him. Um, but you know, he's got a whole other year, so maybe you know uh, there's some room there. And the other one was Harrison Barnes. I, so I, so I, I sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna think like yeah, like exact same thing. What you're saying, I feel like Harrison Barnes is probably, I don't know, too good of a player still to for for the Kings to attach a pick. So maybe that doesn't happen. But exactly. I feel like it could it could be like just a, you know, sort of keep that thread going for Masai and be and you know like hey, hey we're not gonna get anything for Brown, but maybe we could get something for. Barnes in the future and you know he's a veteran and it's just we're sort of we're sort of just escaping the trap of of actually getting nothing for this particular contract yeah it's funny because I actually wrote Harrison Barnes name down and then deleted it because I was like well why are we going to take on more years of the same money we might as well just eat Brown's contract and then we have cap room and to your point I don't think the Kings are going to give up a pick whereas like I mean Bar, uh, Brown does fit the roster, especially if Monk leaves. They they will need the kind of that backup guard who can kind of do mm-hmm. stuff. Um, so he does make sense in the roster, but I just I don't think there's a big enough difference. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he'd be great with Sabonis. Their passing would be awesome. Um, I just don't think it's a big enough change to warrant. And if it is a pick, it's going to be like you know two seconds or a, or a late first. In which case, again, we're not expecting a lot in return. Yeah, and then the the last sort of like I have a couple like it could be like a combo of guys. So like you know, for instance, um, like James Wiseman uh, and somebody else, sort of thing. Like I feel like it could be even worse than what we're describing. Like it yeah. could be players that are really just about to, you know, sort of maybe on their way out of the NBA. Uh, type guys like so, you know I got a combo you know there's 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 Matisse Seibel like it's it could be names like that um <laughs> it, yeah it's 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 a very unsexy thing about to happen but you know it is it is Raptors news Andy is there any no you any, guys any uh, you, you ran down basically all the ones I sort of looked into I saw a couple mentions of some possibilities and Harrison Barnes is is the one that I was like, okay. And then I looked and it's like, yeah, more (laughs) like more years, older guy. Also, like you're getting an older player back, which feels like not what they want. Uh, Although that's probably inevitable. Uh, And yeah, like, yeah, Rui also I I saw it's like, oh, he fits the trade. And it's just like doing this in like doing this. I'm so used to doing this in a video game where you're just like, okay, this guy matches the years. He's like roughly, you know, around the same player. It's like, aha, what if I throw in a second round pick? Will that let them, uh, will that (laughs) interest them in this guy? And it's like, nope, no, it's not enough. Okay, well, I guess I'm just stuck with this guy. And Mm -hmm. then like, maybe he gets better the next year. And you're like, okay, now I can move him. And like, that feels like what the Raptors are doing right now. We're just like, oh, like, you know, let me finish the free agency part of the season. And then when the next season starts, we'll see his, like, let's see if his rating went up. <laughs> They're just like waiting to see that. And like, honestly, it's probably not going up, man. You're just stuck with this guy. So yeah, I don't know. I, I think, I think Freddie, the, the, I, I'm a pretty, I'm a pessimistic person when it comes to these types of trades in the NBA. And it just always seems like it, uh, um, and like to credit to, to, to our boy, you know, like he pulled off some crazy traits, right? Like, uh, um, you know, Masai knows what he's doing up there, but like at the same time, these traits tend to tend to be that thing where it's like, okay, we're just going to get like a 40 year old guy who has a $18 million contract and we're going to get like a second round pick out of it. And that's all it is. Yeah. Or, or we'll do like Schroeder for, uh, um, Din Dinwiddie and just wave just, Dinwiddie. Just, yeah. Um, See you later. I was surprised about that. I really thought Schroeder would get something because he played for the Lakers deep in the playoffs last year in like yeah. meaningful minutes. I was, I was quite surprised by that. He also had like numbers for the Raptors, you know, may, maybe empty numbers, but he had numbers. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll we'll do this this last question here. 
good old classic meandering Friday question. <laughs> um, so a friend of mine recently was uh, a big baseball guy and he went to a Colorado Rockies game uh, and just sat in a random seat. And uh, there was this guy who uh, looked like he knew everybody. Turns out, you know, he sat beside by Fred Jordan and uh, he was like, hey, how's it going? And then uh, Jordan like looked on his phone. And he was like, are you the owner of the team? <laughs> uh, and the guy's like, yeah, yeah, that's me. Uh, and then he, he like talked with him for like a half hour about like the Jays and like just we was sort of weirded out that the owner of the Rockies just like sat beside him and then like got up after like a couple innings, went and talked to other people and was just sort of like milling about speaking to people. Uh, and yeah, I just sort of like, as a Toronto fan, I just couldn't ever imagine anything of the sort. Uh, so by decree, well, for, every sport, first of all, sorry. That would be very tough to make happen because all of the like MLS stock owners would have to be sitting beside you at the Jays game. But anyways, yeah, carry on. Yes, Rogers, exactly. Bell, yeah. not, not so MLS I know we're very like an amorphous blob. Of yeah, 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 yeah. But um, you know, I guess I guess Rogers and Tenenbaum. But uh, yeah, so by decree, every owner of every team has to do this. So from a Toronto perspective. Yeah, maybe it's an amorphous blob. That's fine. Um, <laughs> what is it going to look like, uh, you know, if 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 our ownership group had to do this in a game? Like, they had to just mill about and talk to people. Uh, Aiden, you want to start? Yeah, so I don't know if you're familiar about the scene in the Game of Thrones when Cersei walks from the red keep <laughs> to the sept or back or forth. I'm not sure which one it was. Yeah. The shame yeah. scene. Like, yeah. yeah. That's going to be Edward Rogers. And <laughs> yeah. there's going to be a lot of rotten tomatoes, a lot of like <laughs> calls and curses to eternal hell. Sure. And you, there might even be a couple of guillotines <laughs> that are like brought out of the attic and dusted off and like sure. pushed forward. Be like, Come on, look at him, look at him, look at him in the guillotine. Yeah. Like, and then you know <laughs> his bodyguards are going to offer him mass. I love the guillotine anxious part of the crowd. Like the people who are just like, I got <laughs> one. <laughs> and they're like, it's like, dude, well, they always bring the guillotine, yeah. from, man. Like, oh, my great 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 grandparent was in the French Revolution. Yeah. But I got, uh, I got it right here. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, guys, just wait a second. Um, but yeah, it's going to be ugly and nasty, and like Young Street is just going to be littered in garbage uh, once he comes out. So I don't, I don't think Toronto will do it. They couldn't afford to to have that kind of humiliation for the poor guy. <laughs> for the poor guy, um, <laughs> I love that. Like, yeah, we've gone all the way to be like, yeah, tough guy. Uh, t- tough lot in life. Um, I, but I think that's basically what, yeah, I think that actually is. And there's so much rage that I feel like yeah. it would get pretty ugly, pretty quick. <laughs> Whoever is like the guillotine collector would show themselves. And, um, yeah, Andy, what's your, what's your take on this? Yeah. I, I'm listen. people are throwing their cell phone bills at Ed Rogers and stuff. Like that's, what's going to happen if it ever is like that here. Like, let's say that it's that and not the stockholder version of it. Yeah. People are just going to be like, yay, I canceled my cable a year ago. You guys are still charging me, you know? Cause like, that's why I will never use Rogers again. And I absolutely would be yelling at Ed Rogers if I was anywhere near him in that arena. You better believe it. So, uh, yeah, I hate that company, <laughs> and I would definitely be one of those guys who uh, gets kicked out because he's ye- he's an idiot and yelling at the owner. Um, because so, didn't that happen recently where he was like sitting like kind of, I don't know if it was Rogers, I can't remember, but there was like someone was sitting like in like near like where the players come out. Remember there was like a thing and someone yelled at them or something. I can't remember. That's what I'm that, referring that, to. But that that's pretty fair. It that rings a bell. Sense. Yeah. Anyways, uh. Yeah, it'd be a, it'd be a mess. It'd be uh, people hate people hate Rogers, man. So here's here here's my take. Is uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna zig here when you guys are both zagging. I think you know back to the amorphous blob, the the the, the shareholder, the majority owners. I think people would not know who they are or what they look like, uh, and I think that Rogers, uh, maybe even Tenenbaum, 
Um, you know, whoever's the rep- – it used to be like George Cope for Bell. I'm not even sure who it is anymore. But I think people would be just like gabbing it up. And then all of a sudden, they, you know, they'd be like, oh, are you – like, uh, you know, if they drop, like, I actually, yeah, I own this team. People would be like, what, the Raptors? And I'd be like, yeah. And I'd be like, oh, uh, okay, uh, fuck you, man. Like, I, I, <laughs> I, I, like I, I think it would be very, I don't think people would be able to mobilize because I think they would generally be like, I, I do not know what these people look like, I- including including Ed Rogers. I think, also, I, know, I know what Ed Rogers looks like, but do you think the average person does? No, no yeah. but do you think but, Ed Rogers could exist in a basketball game and like a general crowd at a basketball game and people not be like, who the fuck is this guy wearing this like 90 year old guy in a suit? Like, who the who is this guy? You know, or whatever. What? I don't even know how, how old is Ed Rogers. I have no idea. He's not 90. What? He's definitely he's he's not, like, not, he's the kid. Who's the right? actor? <laughs> who's the actor yeah, that you, plays you Ed Rogers? Ted Rogers. He's dead. He's long dead. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, Ed Rogers is like 50 years old or something. Yeah. Born in 1969. Yeah. Yeah. They'd be like, but seriously though, like, you'd be like, who's this freaking guy? You know? Get him out of here. Sorry, Aiden, but were you just sorry? What well, was I was gonna ask, who's the who's the actor that plays Ed Rogers? That that gives me a vision of what he might look like. Uh the like guy Andy Richter? in yeah, Andy Richter's a great, Andy Richter great one. Is Andy great. Richter's a great yeah, it's a very good one. Really I was gonna good. say the guy on the guy on Modern Family. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. The, 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 yeah, the yeah, the husband. The, the, yeah, the husband, exactly. The queer guy, yeah, yeah. Uh he would be great. But I also, met him at an LA Kings game once. Anyways, see you later. Also, Freddie, like the shareholder idea, be like, I mean, it's like such a douchey thing. Like, oh, hey, man, what's going on? Like, I own the Toronto Raptors. Like, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. 1.7% of the Toronto Raptors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like such a dick like thing to say. Um, and I mean, listen, I hate to mention a deceased actor, but perhaps Bill Paxton. What? Okay. He he looks a bit like Ed Rogers. <laughs> wow. Wow. How dare you? You're just just you're just besmirching dead guys all over this podcast. Right? I, I am, you're I, just I, all I, over I love this. Bill Paxton. This guy looks nothing like Bill Paxton. <laughs> Bill Paxton's a heartthrob compared to this guy, man. Heart? <laughs> okay, fair enough. How oh dare God. you? Um and what so I which, was trying which, to think of Sorry, go ahead. Which of the Monfort brothers did Jordan meet? Charles K. Monfort or Richard L. Monfort? They're the owners mm. of the. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to follow. I'm gonna have to follow up. Mm, okay. I hope actually at this point. I uh, shout out Jordan Matisse. I hope at this point that it was someone pretending to be the owner. And when I follow up, I'm like which of the Monfort brothers? who be like Monfort. <laughs> it's just some like, guy who told him that he was the owner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's actually Bill guy. Paxson. It's the ghost of yeah. Bill Paxson. Um. Okay. Well, this this has been a this has been a great. All over the place podcast. Thank you both, uh, Aiden. Let me let me go to you first. Uh, what are you up to? What do you want to plug? I'm up to nothing. I'm not. Uh, I haven't been writing for a while, so I have just been chilling, watching the playoffs, enjoying enjoying hoops from afar. Hell yeah! Nice. Yeah. Um, well, follow, follow Aiden. Check him out. Um, yeah, I still have thoughts. Yeah, he's got thoughts. Come on. Yeah. Uh, and Lord of the Flies, Andy, you got anything going on? Or uh, Don't go to Cleveland. Steer clear okay. of that place. They got crazy flies in the springtime. Um, come on down to the Smith House. Fourth Wednesday of every month. You can. We'll do trivia together. You'll be fine. Wonderful. Um, and shows. I, We're doing shows all over the place. Yeah, 837 Ossington. Uh, I, have, I have a comedy show in a backyard... Uh, on the 21st. So so come check that out in Toronto. Um, Raptors Republic uh, also has a draft night coming up. Check the website for, for, for details. Um, and uh, it's at the Three Brewers again. It was really, really fun last year. Um, for sure, people did uh, start chanting, we got dick. Um, it was funny. It's a good time. Uh, so come to that and uh, subscribe to Raptors Republic. Uh, you know, rate, review us, help us out. And yeah, see you next week.